Hot Update 1.14 is now in the game. This update brings some long-awaited changes to the vehicles and several enjoyable new features. A Japanese map, a branch of the Czechoslovakian heavy tanks, a training mode to explore maps, and a mechanic that will give a second wind to your favorite vehicles. Testing of field modification on the Sandbox server has ended. A number of balance changes were implemented as a result. Now the feature is ready to go live on the main servers. Its main purpose is to set the characteristics of your favorite vehicles specifically to your playstyle. There are three types of modifications, standard, dual, and special. They are available for elite vehicles from tier 6 to tier 10. Standard modifications provide a bonus for a particular vehicle characteristic. Dual modifications boost one characteristic but worsen the other. Special modifications allow for a more thorough preparation of vehicles for battle and provide an opportunity to assign a category to the second equipment slot. Thanks to field modifications, you'll be able to fine-tune your vehicle to fit your playstyle. Watch a dedicated video on our channel to learn more about field modification. A new training mode will be available with the update release, Topography. It will help you explore key positions and routes on certain maps. This feature will be especially useful for new players. This is a single player mode and the battles take place in the format of scenarios. To launch a battle, you need to select one of the available maps that vary in difficulty. Then you select a vehicle type and a location of the base. Then the battle will start. Your mission is to follow the instructions and destroy the enemy using the potential of your vehicle and instructor's advice. After you complete all four scenarios, the map will be considered explored. You will receive rewards for successful completion of scenarios, but if the battle is unsuccessful, you won't lose anything. However, your main reward will be invaluable experience that will come in handy when playing in random battles against real opponents. There's a map that is missing in this mode, because it's brand new. The list of maps for random battles has a new addition, Safe Haven. The map refers to a Japanese port from the 1960s that was transformed from a military to a civilian port. At first glance, the map looks quite complex. However, it has a familiar layout like other maps. The port is a route for sturdy vehicles. There's a main hangar that is protected from artillery fire and is well suited for maneuverable vehicles with strong turrets. Using the hangar, you can perform flanking maneuvers and influence the fight in the center if you break the main gates. Exits from the hangar are exposed from both sides, so you better rely on your tank's armor. Or you can risk it and try and push through a flank. Those who capture the hangar will have control over the port center. The other part of the map features an area that is best suited for fast vehicles. There are terrain folds, various cover, bypass routes, and a bridge that you can cross and quickly get into enemy territory. This area is also great for sniper vehicles that will provide fire support to their allies. There's a bunker at the center of the map. It also provides good protection against artillery and connects the map's main areas. There are four entrances to the bunker, two from the sides of the bases, one from the port side and one from the green side. The interior layout creates cover for positional skirmishes. But remember, the quicker you capture the bunker, the more effectively your allies will be able to provide fire support in other directions. There's an open area on the bunker roof where quick vehicles can show what they've got. 
From there, they can spot opponents at several positions and also provide moderate fire support to allies while distracting the enemy. But be careful, the roof is very exposed, so use local cover to the maximum. Just like the bunker, the roof connects the port and the green area. So you can move your forces over it, but you should do it carefully, especially in slow vehicles. Safe Haven is an excellent test of your tactical abilities. Explore the area, try different strategies, and find the ones that win. And a new branch of heavy tanks will help you do it. Your acquaintance with the new heavies will start at Tier 7 with the VZ-44-1. This vehicle will help you adapt to the heavy tank gameplay. It has decent turret armor and a 105mm gun with good penetration and decent damage per shot. It has the dynamics of a classic heavy tank. It keeps up with other Tier 7 heavies but doesn't shoot for the stars, unlike the next vehicle in the branch. The TNH-105-1000 becomes more interesting. In addition to good armor, it has screens on its turrets. Its speed can reach 50 km per hour. But what really distinguishes it from the Tier 7 vehicle is that it has two top guns to choose from. A standard cyclic gun and a two-shell autoloader. Both have similar firepower characteristics. The difference is in their use and player preferences. The two-shell autoloader is situational. It allows for causing huge damage in a short time, but takes a long time to reload. The cyclic gun is a classic that allows for causing consistent damage and is always appropriate. So it's worth trying both options before you make your final choice. The TNH-T VZ-51 at Tier 9 unlocks the potential of the two top guns thanks to its general characteristics. Its armor and dynamics have good characteristics compared to other Tier 9 heavy tanks. And this is a great base for the guns, now at 120 mm. They have average accuracy, good armor penetration, and excellent damage per shot, while providing a choice between a two-shell autoloader and a cyclic gun. All in all, the vehicle characteristics help you to determine in advance where one of the shooting styles can be implemented. The crown of the branch is the VZ-55, the final chord of the Czechoslovakian heavy tanks. The vehicle's armor and mobility parameters are similar to a Tier 9, with 300 mm of front turret armor, a more powerful engine, a top speed of 50 km per hour. And the main threat of the Czechoslovak two menacing 130mm guns to choose from, a cyclic and a two-shell autoloader. Both guns have high damage per shot, good armor penetration compared to other Tier 10 heavies, decent gun depression angles and fairly good accuracy. Initially, only the cyclic gun will be available for the VZ-55. The two-shell autoloader needs to be researched. So the gameplay of a classic heavy tank awaits you at first. Thanks to its sturdy turret and decent gun depression angles, the vehicle can use small terrain folds to its advantage, while its great accuracy allows for supporting the Allies in the distance. All this is supported by the main feature of cyclic guns. Stability. After you research the second gun, you'll have a choice, because the two-shell autoloader also has its enjoyable moments. The main one is a chance to dish out almost 1,000 damage in two seconds. If an enemy decides to trade hit points, you'll come out on top. Not willing to trade fire? Wait until the enemy fires and unload your drum at them. Just select the opponent wisely. Try playing with either gun and decide what shooting style suits your gameplay better. Fire measured and practical, or a lot and depending on the situation. Find your argument to solve the problem.
we continue implementing changes to the characteristics of premium vehicles. The changes are aimed at highlighting the vehicle roles and making them more relevant in battles. Now it's the popular vehicle's turn. The first seven are the vehicles with preferential matchmaking. They all had their armor penetration with standard shells increased by 10 mm. This will make causing damage to opponents' weak spots a bit easier. The American T-34 got improved gun stabilization, better hull and turret traverse speeds, and increased engine power. Now it will be harder to outmaneuver it, while its shots when rolling from behind cover will become more accurate. The AMX CDC medium tank now has better accuracy, stabilization, and maximum reverse speed. Now it will be easier for it to fire from a distance and avoid unnecessary damage. Finally, four medium tanks of American origin. They got general improvements. The M48A2 Roimpanzer now has more comfortable gun handling and better firepower. The M46 Patton KR now aims and reloads faster. The T95E2 now aims faster and has better armor penetration with a standard shell. The 59 Patton received improved aiming and mobility. But it's not only the tanks that have received long-awaited changes. Slight changes were made to the center of the Ruinberg map. The zone with the balcony was reworked there, and several buildings were added. From the balance point of view, this will decrease the influence on the upper base alley, but will keep the ability to spot enemy tanks in the village so that the enemy doesn't cause damage to your allies in town scot-free. A number of personal missions for artillery received some fixes. The changes mainly touched complex missions, where the amount of damage and stun play an important role. You can see some of them on your screen. You can find the full list of fixes on our official game website. Changes were also made to the popular frontline mode that starts very soon. The opportunity to play in Tier 9 vehicles was added in a test format. And the system of combat reserves was significantly reworked to be used on the battlefield. Watch a dedicated video on our channel to learn more about it. Update 1.14 will bring many new things into the game. New goals, new experiences and new impressions from the long-awaited changes. So get ready for some hot days in World of Tanks, Commanders. Good luck on the battlefield.